Hello dear friends, welcome to another video of the Never Do Through the GUI What You Can Do Through the GLE channel. I am Vagilis Prokopiu and you are watching Functional Programming Writing Bug Free Programs. Today we will talk a little bit about this topic about functional programming and how it can help us avoid uh, bugs in our code. I will provide a, a simple solid example uh, showing how we can avoid uh, bugs and I will also refer to some uh, external resources that I think that are very useful to check out. So let's get into the video and I would like to start first of all by uh <coughs> referring to these external resources there is this video uh, by John Hughes, Why Functional Pro Programming Matters. He is the author of the paper too. Uh, this is a very good video. I suggest that you should see it if you uh, are interested in functional programming. And I think you should be interested. Plus there is another video by Robert C. Martin or Uncle Bob uh, about functional programming and the failure of state. Uh, I encourage you to check out these resources uh, because I believe functional programming is indeed uh, very important and uh, it's a paradigm that uh, we should uh, embra <coughs> embrace <coughs> I'm sorry and apply in our programs because it provides many benefits. Having said that, I wanted to get into the actual video and start by uh, saying that I created um, this video some uh, days ago about uh, invalidation errors, where I talk about these invalidation errors in JavaScript and how Rust can uh, help us avoid these errors. So I would like to expand upon this idea and come again here to our code. I am using the same JavaScript code that I used uh, in that video. <coughs> and as you can see we have an array. And uh, then what we do is just loop over the array. We are testing each element and if it is greater than 4 then we are removing it from the array. Now looking at this code we should suppose that uh, the actual result after we run this code would be an array containing 1 and 3. So let's run our code and see the result. Let's come here and mm, nodes. We don't want nodes, we want node. So if we run this code, the, the result is 1, 3 and 7, as you can see, and not 1 and 3. As you can see, this is a bug and of course this is data corruption because we are uh, manipulating the data, we are acting upon the data at the same time that we are looping the data. Now we show that Rust uh, does not allow this to happen and now we will see how functional programming can help us avoid this bug in JavaScript 2. So we will comment out this code, we will keep it though and <coughs> I am zoomed in as much as I can. We will write the, let's say the functional functional version. So the first thing that we want to do is define uh, a function that will filter out the array. So we will call this function for example is less than <coughs> 4 and this will be a function that will accept a number and it will return the number being less or equal to 4. 
this is the function that we are going to use in order to filter our array. So we continue and let's define a new array, new uh, array, new array, which will be equal to the test array that we have and we will filter that with the is less than 4 uh, function that we created and at the end we will console log this new array ok let's go to our terminal and run the program the result as you can see is 1 and 3 this is the expected result and indeed in this functional version the result is 1 and 3. So as you can very easily see uh, the functional version of the program uh, actually has the right result and we avoid this bug of the invalidation of the data. Now why does this happen? This happens because, as we know, functional programming by default avoids uh, state and especially mutable state. So, as you can see here, we don't have any uh, variables that are uh, changed, like in this array, but most of all, we are not acting upon the initial array, but we are returning an, uh, a new array a filtered array. So we are not acting upon the initial um, data. We manipulate the data, we act upon the initial data and we create new data, new state. So as you can see, functional programming can alleviate many of the bugs that come from not using functional programming and I would uh, suggest everybody to start looking into this topic and uh, starting looking into how they can integrate functional concepts and fun functional code into their own code bases. That's uh, the, all the info that I wanted to share with you in this video. Uh, if you like this video you can help spreading it by sharing the video. You can also comment, like and subscribe by clicking, clicking the penguin that you will see on your screen. Thank you for watching and have a great day.